And then uh, also working in non-traditional materials, um, which I uh, currently do. And then um, why I keep making this stuff. Uh, and is there some sort of secret magic to that, which I don't think there really is. So I'm going to start with the last one first. Um, if uh, I'm asked just bluntly why I make art, Frankly, the first thing that comes into my head is like, why not? And doesn't everybody do this? Um, and of course, unfortunately, they don't. And the sad fact is, is that I really basically don't understand people who don't make art. I'm confessing that to you because you're a state away from me up here, up in California. And uh, hopefully no, none of you will get back down there to uh, tell other people I know that that's true about me. But it really, it, it, it's really true. Uh, when I have a group of students in a, in a drawing class, many of them may be non-majors, and um, I really don't get it. I, I don't understand what kind of people they are. I mean, well, why would you want to do this all the time? Uh, it seems very natural to me. It's really a life kind of habit. So I put down a couple of quotations that I think are sort of pertinent or somehow directed towards this idea about uh, making art uh, over the long haul. And um, I'll try to follow that and embellish a little bit of some observations and then segue into the work. So uh, here's a couple of quotes that I thought about uh, just the last couple of days. Um, one's from Edgar Degas. I thought of uh, him because uh, Tim took me to the Portland Museum uh, Saturday. Really nice. And I saw the Degas portrait. And it clicked this uh, uh, quote in my head. So according to Degas, Everybody has talent when they are 25. The trick is to have it when you're 50. So says Dega. Everybody's got talent when they're 25. Everybody wants to try out for American Idol. Yeah. Everybody feels entitled. Everybody's wonderful. Um, surviving is another thing. Have it when you're 50, he says. Uh, another quote. Uh, that popped into my head is by a writer, uh, Roald Dahl. And it's a real short one. And he says, the task is being. The task is being. Writing is the means. That's it. The task is being. Writing is the means. And I can really, um, Kind of shelter under that quotation. Uh, the task is being, art is the means for me. And I'll try to uh, unpack that a little bit. So there are a couple of basic ways of constructing art as a life practice. You can uh, develop a very personal kind of dialogue with it. You make art out of the substance of your own narrative, your own ideas. So forth. You can be very impersonal about it. You work with things entirely outside of yourself, just the language of art, form, or something like that. Now, as I construct it, art enables me to talk back to life okay, in a way that unites me uh, aesthetically, intuitively, and intellectually. Um, in gospel language, uh, we say that I can do it with all of my heart, my mind, and my strength. So all of me, whatever I possess, can funnel into me uh, talking back to, responding to life as it occurs. I am, believe it or not, still alive. Um, and I, uh, I hope I'll go on being alive for a while. So in, in a very real sense, uh, art is not separable from being alive for me. Uh, as long as I am alive and I have some kind of space, time, energy, strength, I'll get up in the morning wondering, can I get in the studio today? Which is my basic thought, actually. Just about every morning I wake up, whether I have to go teach a class like Tim, Jillian, or not, it's, can I get into the studio today? Uh, so that's just an automatic process now for me, inseparable from the fact of being alive, having being. 
it's also true that um, I guess you'd say the motor for for propelling that forward is desire. Okay. Uh, in the Hindu tradition, actually, they think that nothing happens without desire. It is sort of the ground of all things that occur. Desire. Desire itself is a kind of tension, if you think about it. So, hunger, for example. Uh, hopefully, some of you have eaten before you came, uh, and you'll not be getting too hungry while you're sitting there listening to me. But if you do, what's happening is your body is experiencing a kind of tension. And we call that tension hunger. And the hunger is inseparable from desire. I desire to become one with a hammer. Yeah? So I have tension, desire, fulfillment. Uh, on a more personal level, you may feel existentially incomplete or isolated as a person. And so I live in tension, a tension of incompleteness with myself. And so I desire to marry Sally, right? Because she's going to solve that tension for me. So desire really is the motor. Uh, life itself is tension. Being alive is a form of tension. Jesus puts it just very simply. In this life, you're going to have tribulation. This is a blank statement. Or the Buddha would say, well, life is suffering. Right? Life is a kind of tension. Um, for human beings. Unlike animals, we can't just run away from it. Uh, I mean, I can try to evade it or escape it through alcoholism or drugs or any kind of number of compulsions. Uh, but that really defer defers the project and work of becoming and being, which is the human vocation. So as an artist, my choice is to respond to that tension of life, the tension of being alive, by talking back to it through art. So the task is being, my means, is art. Um, when I whoop, keep my computer on, I got Sounds, 
uh, were, were colors of a palette, so I could select stylistic elements and uh, combine them to uh, advance whatever I thought I was trying to express. So these paintings then um, do that. They, they are an attempt to speak back to attention in the language of painting itself. So they're basically composed of a substrate image. Uh, in this case, uh, in a Civil War era photograph of the Capitol Dome, which was under construction at the time. And so that's very kind of laboriously simulated. It's a very slow-mo kind of thing. You know, it takes a long time to do. And then you've got these uh, accent images that dropped over the top of it that literally kind of float off of the surface, uh, which are basically contemporary images uh, in dynamic tension with the substrate uh, in some other form of tension. I can actually set it up. I construct it aesthetically in uh, the pictorial field. So, uh, what we got here, the Hunt for Wild Asses, uh, the title itself is just the standard art historical way of talking about this quotation, black and white, uh, running across the bottom of the uh, image. It's a you know, paraphrase of a Assyrian bodily uh, image. Assyria being located in what is uh, present-day Iraq, so it's one way of talking about place. Uh, and then you can, as you can see, you got these guys on the horses uh, uh, shooting arrows into these uh, uh, wild asses. Attack dogs and stuff. Uh, and then you've got uh, what's uh, floating up there in the uh, in the sky? Anybody recognize this thing? Here's a hint. It's on your money. 